All right, we are back with our final Momentum March challenge call. I love doing challenges, as you already know. Uh, we only do them like every other quarter, so be ready when we do the next one in September. It's going to be a while. So if you're not yet, you can jump in our group. We are moving away from Facebook in the future, or at least when it comes to the challenges. So that being said, you don't want to miss this. Get on the newsletter. You'll be the first to know. But without further ado, let's just dive in. Today is the last Momentum March Q&A. All things mindset. A lot of great questions. Enjoy. So Ilva says a question about mindset. Why is it so easy in some periods to make good choices, exercise well, and eat well, while in other periods, it feels like everything is going to hell. In these bad periods, it's also very difficult to break an unhealthy pattern with, for example, comfort eating. Do you have any good advice here? I mean, also there. It's life. Like we are going to feel like shit sometimes. That's an unpopular one. I, th I think we sometimes in these days think that everything needs to be perfect and also here. Like we're not going to feel great all the time. We're, uh, we're going to have really good times where we feel amazing on top of the world. And then, yeah, we, we might feel like, hey, you know what? I'm on a roll with nutrition and fitness. Yeah, guess what? That's the easy shit. When we feel <laughs> excited, when we're happy, when we're, you know, when it's easy, then we feel excited. But that's, again, like that's the easy shit. What about life, right? Because life is not always happy and easy and whatever. What about the rest? Because that's a little bit of our, you know, time basically where we feel on top of the world. We have a little bit of time. So let's call it maybe, let's let's call it like 2020. So 20% of life and just putting numbers like this is just making this up, right? Just for a visual. Let's say 20% of the time we feel on top of the world. We're ready to, you know, just do anything. We're chasing our goals and it feels great. 20% we're going to feel like shit. We're going to hate this whole health and fitness thing, we don't want to work out, we don't want to meal prep, we don't feel like it. Guess what? We still got to take action because otherwise we specific or we we almost purposely make it worse because now we allow that to influence our actions, right? Which is easier said than done, like to, to not do that, but still. Again, we can have feelings without acting on them, but then there's 60% left and that's kind of like anything in between. That's what we're going to, you know, live life. So understanding that, first of all, it is going to be like that is important. Because then, hey, like at least we're not bummed out or surprised because guess what? When you're in a great spot, and I tell my clients this, I'm like, hey, you know, right now you're on a roll. You're feeling great. You're super motivated and you're killing it. But guess what? This too shall pass. Like you will get to a point where this is going to turn. And then you're going to feel not motivated. You're not going to feel like checking in. You're not going to feel like meal prepping. But it's exactly those moments where you're going to make the difference. When people feel like shit, I'll tell them too. Like, hey, this too shall pass. Like, this is going to go again. We need to understand that those periods are going to be there, but they will go. And then it gets better again. So what I want to know is what can we do to keep you adherent, consistent, and on top of what we can control, even when we feel like shit. Because here's the thing, the only thing that will make you feel better and get you out of that spot again is taking action. This is where coaching, accountability, those kind of things are massive because you have someone on your team who can be like, hey, you know what, Like, let's figure this out for you. Let's get you to a better spot. But we need to create systems to avoid this from happening. And it's a process. We all go through ups and downs. I recently went through a bit of a down period. But that's okay. It's normal, right? What got me out of that was the same basic shit that I need to be doing anyway. So I always go back to the basics. What can I control? Objectively speaking, it doesn't fucking matter how I feel. I can always meal prep. That doesn't change. It's not physically holding me back. I can always track my food. I can always take 20 minutes every single week or 10 even to plan my meals. I can make a shopping list. I can plan for a walk, my workouts. Those things don't change when we, when we feel like crap. And realizing that also allows us to be like, hey, okay, well, Let's get it done anyway, because here's the cool thing. 
once you just take action, and that could be the one little thing, and you're, of course, you recently started with us, so you know, you're working with Alexander, who's amazing, um, but like talk to your coach, if you feel like that, be open to new processes and new things, because hey, you just started, so give yourself the time, and continue to work on this with your coach, and continue to go like, hey, okay, right now we're here, what can we do anyway? Can we hold you accountable to getting that done? Can we get ourselves to a better spot? Because only your actions will get you to that better place again. And no, no feeling is going to counter that. Like only action will actually create change. Only action, I mean, this challenge is called Momentum March. Only you taking action gets the ball rolling or, you know, allows you to keep the ball rolling. And then that positive momentum from your actions that you're putting in will start to show results. Those results will get you feeling better, fired up about the progress that you're making, especially when you're feeling stressed, because now you're like, hey, I'm showing myself that I can still do this anyway, right? And now we're getting into a positive spot again. Make sense? So again, action. And that's hard sometimes. It is hard. But sometimes, as much as it's difficult, we just have to take that first step. And then from there, you can start to create momentum again. Jenny says, how long should workout be a day? Is there a magic number? Does walking quickly uh, meet the guidelines of a workout? I mean, it depends. Um, it's a big, it depends question. So how long should a workout be? Whatever you can stick to. If that's 15 minutes, it, it's going to be 15 minutes. Um, if it's 30, 60, great. More, not necessary for most people. How often should we go? Three, three, four times for most people is great. Maybe five if we can. Six is on, on the high end. We, we usually don't do that with our clients. Now, can we do some lower intensity stuff? Walking? Sure. Because you mentioned too, right? Uh, walking quickly doesn't mean any guidelines for a workout. I mean, there's a time and place for both. We don't have to walk quickly for it to be healthy for you, right? I'd much rather see you just have a normal walk and have the stress managing benefits there, right? And the blood sugar benefits, and right? And then maybe also do a weightlifting session, but like start with what you currently can do. And I can follow up with you because it's a big, it depends question. But for any guidelines, like there's not one set of guidelines. And to anyone watching or listening, be aware that people online will make it sound like there's one way, but it's not to, like anything health and fitness. Like there's nothing that has one solution. Make sense? It's like whatever it's going to be best for you in that scenario. And that's where we, you know, can help with you in terms of figuring that out. Let me see. We have some more photos. Then we have a question from Taya. She says, how do you practice self-reflection? What is your pep talk to yourself in different scenarios? I have a few, um, I guess. Ooh, that's a good one. Sometimes I can be pretty hard on myself. Bit of tough love, you know, I think we all need that. Sometimes I will literally just put pen to paper and let it flow. And I, I can't really explain what I'm doing. It just kind of, right? Um, but it's the, I, I, I write about the situation that like whatever it is that I'm working through. Um, and it's it's often, and again, it kind of just comes out, but it's often questions that I ask myself. So I write it as if I'm talking to myself, which is, sounds kind of weird maybe, but I'm asking specific questions and I'm trying to see what I can do about a certain situation who I can ask for help or what it really is. Am I being too hard on myself? Can I, can, can I give myself some credit? But it depends because you're asking what's your pep talk to yourself in different scenarios. It could be anything really. If I, if I catch myself just being just, just, just kind of complaining, right? When I catch myself, like I'm just going to fill up my coffee. When I catch myself just kind of blaming shit, when I catch myself coming up with excuses or, you know, kind of going about it that way, 
I basically just get, tell myself too to get my shit back together because again, things in and outside of your control, we can always talk about, you know, external factors and all that. At the end of the day, it's action. You know, what are we doing about the situation, whatever that is? Now, of course, um, if we're maybe just not feeling great, okay, why not? Why not ask yourself the questions? It's like, hey, like, why are we feeling a certain way? What can I currently do that's within my control that will make me feel better? Um, and self-reflection can mean many things. I have a daily self-reflection where I kind of reflect on the day. How well did I do the work, right? That I said I was going to do? Did I do my most important tasks? Did I take care of my nutrition, my movement, my mindset, right? My relationships. Um, yeah, kind of almost like a recap of the day. That's a, that's a self-reflection, right? The check-ins that we do with our clients, and you are a client of us for a long time. It's like, hey, you know, reflecting on a week. How is it going? Like, how is my effort? First of all, I say I have these goals, but what am I doing about it? Um, what's going well, what needs more work and how. Again, it could look like anything, um, but to give an, everyone on this call maybe a takeaway when it comes to like tactics for journaling, to be honest with you, I'm still like also just, you know, trying stuff, you know, uh, but gratitude journaling is huge. It's simply writing out here's a few things I'm grateful for today. And yes, it sounds maybe kind of like, why would you do that? But like, trust me, like, Start doing that and it'll start to show up in life and then you will get it. Um, so just, just writing down like what you're thankful for, you know, three days or three things a day. Uh, you can do what else? I will statements. I am statements. You can just write whatever comes up. That's what I usually do. I will say that usually becomes a thing once you get a little bit more versed in journaling, I guess, because now we just kind of do what I feel like for the day or need. Um, but to give you one more is if you get the, the daily stoic journal from uh, Ryan holiday, there's questions in there already, which change up, I think over time. Uh, and that could be a really good one. Now, let me see. Again, so yeah, like I said, combination of tough love towards myself and mostly just being resourceful and productive. Asking yourself the questions, trying to work through the situation. Okay, Tammy says, mindset question. So many times I compare myself to others and I think that I should look a certain way. Any tips on accepting your body type? I mean, body type doesn't necessarily have to mean anything right um let me put it this way if we have a certain goal then we can work towards that goal symbol this is maybe even a little bit of a fixed and growth mindset topic let's, let's get into that because okay we, so we're comparing ourselves to others and then we think that we should look a certain way okay we could reframe that maybe to more of a, a growth mindset standpoint because at the end of the day, and this is how my my mentor uh, calls it, he says, what you eat doesn't make them shit. So we can also flip that and say, hey, what they eat doesn't make you shit, basically. I know it sounds a little you know, blunt, maybe, but you get it. What they do, say, think, or look like doesn't have anything to do with you or the other way around but going to that growth mindset the thing i just said why can't we use that as inspiration now of course i don't want you to think i need to look like that person but we can take that and think okay there is an underlying reason why this person looking a certain way makes me feel a certain way okay then what can we learn here? Success leaves clues in a way, right? Or in many ways. But that means that, hey, if we do have, you know, a certain goal and we do know certain people who have reached that goal, 
Why can't that be a motivator? Why can't that be a reason for you to be like, hey, you know what? This person did it. That means that I can do it. Hey, you know what? This person is there already, but instead of being jealous, I'm going to be like, hey, you know what? Like, let me ask them some questions of like, how did they get to that point? This goes back to, you know, surrounding yourself with, you know, like-minded people or people who've been there, done that. It's like, hey, okay, how did they do it? Um, because comparison doesn't get us anywhere. So we really have a, an opportunity to choose what we're going to do with it. Are we going to use it as fuel to take action for our goals? Or are we going to use it as a, you know, way of, uh, you know, a fixed mindset kind of approach where it's like, ah, I could never be like that. I could never do that. And I'm not saying that you are, you know, talking about it this way, but I'm just saying, I'm just sharing different perspectives here because I think Tammy, if you have a certain goal um, and that's body, you know, body composition related, then we can work towards that. And at the end of the day, it's about showing yourself too, I think that you can get to that point. And understanding too, because here's the thing. I spent my life when I was a kid mostly, but I spent even also when as an adult, uh, the, like let me say the majority of my life I spent caring too much about what other people would say or think or do or, you know, at, at the end of the day, it, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. And getting to that point is difficult sometimes. Getting to that point can take work, but I feel like I just got to a point where I just stopped caring. And I honestly, I can't, I can't point out what that was specifically, but what I think is going to be huge for you is starting to take action for your goals. Then once you start to see the results, you will start to also understand that, Hey, you know what? I can also do this. And I don't have to compare myself because the only thing that will allow you to grow is to look at your own situation, not someone else's, like your own situation, addressing where you are at and then looking to improve and then compare yourself to yourself maybe, right? But not someone else because that's their journey, not yours. Just how your journey is not someone else's. Those are two separate things, right? So they need to be approached separately as well. Because any tips on accepting body type? I mean, body type is not really a thing. We can change that. Um, and acceptance, I mean, we can accept our current situation, but we also need to understand that, hey, if we want to do something about it, let's, let's do it. Make sense? Let's do it. Because it begins with awareness. It begins with acceptance that we are currently in a certain state. But then we can use that to be productive and move on. Make sense? Because we can change the situation. Mindset question from Lisa. I'm a single mom of a child who is on sports teams and is a Cub Scout. I've also committed to myself, oh, sorry, I've also committed myself to being a board member of two of the groups he's involved in, which is awesome, by the way, Lisa, first of all. Answering the daily questions of did I meet my goals have made me realize sometimes I do not have or don't do enough for me. Or when it's time for me, I'm exhausted. How can I still stay motivated to move on, to move, sorry, and set my mindset to engage in activities when my body is just telling me to slow down? Which do I listen to, my inner voice to keep moving or my body to rest? It's a big one. I think uh, both. I think the current expectations of people with their life situations are often unrealistic it's like hey like going back to like what what do we expect here are we assuming that we're supposed to train five six times a week or are we just going to do three times and be fine with it because that's great as a busy parent like that's amazing you're doing a lot of really cool stuff hey like, you're doing what a parent should do and it's supporting your kid you know like how cool is that so and being on the board and all of that, like it shows that you care, obviously. Um, what I will always tell people is like, hey, we do want to make sure that whatever you're doing also doesn't 
um, cost you, if that makes sense. Like it, it doesn't take away from you actually taking care of your own stuff because that's another responsibility thing. As a parent, which is often unpopular to bring up, but as a parent, we also have the responsibility to be healthy. We as a parent have the responsibility to lift the weights, to sleep enough, to manage our stress, to eat healthy. Because if we take care of our own health, we can be there for someone else. If we don't, we often think like, hey, I'm doing the right thing because I'm, I'm sacrificing myself to be there for someone else, to be there for my kids. But guess what? At one point, we're going to hit burnout. We will. We're going to get sick or burnout or injured, whatever it is, right? We're going to run into health issues. So it's like, if we think about it, it's kind of irresponsible sometimes to keep doing more and more and more and it costing our own health. Makes sense? And I'm, again, I'm speaking generally here. So that being said, let's look at the situation. Let's see what is possible. And then let's put up our or put on our detective heads, um, hats, not heads, and try to figure out, okay, what can we point out in life? Where can we save some time? Where can we manage our stress? What can we do to recharge? Hey, am I taking too much on, right? Um, where can we save time? What can we do so that, one, you can get a workout in, two, the expectations are realistic, and three, it doesn't cost you your energy levels because you shouldn't feel like your energy is in the tank all the time either, you know, because that means that you're probably doing too much or undersleeping or whatever it is, overstressed. Okay, that's only going to last so long. Makes sense. So we can follow up about this. But if you're constantly feeling exhausted, it's a tough one. Um, I don't think we should be choosing I think you should be keep, you know, you should keep moving for sure. Um, but this is again like it's the the expectations. It's like, hey, like our busy schedule. Do we think we're supposed to work out three, five times a week, or, or you know, four, five times six? Or can we do with three and be great with that? You know what I mean? So we'll talk about this more because I know we've talked about nutrition uh, before, and I still think as well that you know there's some something to figure out here. Um, and that's also where coaching comes in. It's like, hey, like, let's actually address life and let's figure out what does work for you currently and what we can adhere to. Make sense? We put it on paper. We make sense of it. Catherine says, any tips on overcoming negative body image and, and negative thoughts when things aren't going the way you want? I mean, we just start coaching. So we're going to have we're gonna have a lot of time to work on things together. Negative body image. We can, we can always do something about it, right? Um, which it's okay to have that negative body image, to be honest with you. And this is maybe an unpopular one too. It's okay to have the feeling, but what do our actions say? You know what I mean? Negative thoughts when things aren't going the way you want. Okay. Which is, I would like, like to know, first of all, because if we zoom out, we can usually figure out what can we still do? Because again, only our actions will lead to a certain outcome and that will then impact our mindset again. But we'll follow up about this because we just uh, signed you up. So I'll, uh, we'll talk about this on Monday in your next uh, check-in. More photos. And then I think we are going to wrap up our Q&A pretty soon. Karina says, how do I proceed with uh, when I receive comments uh, of my training and my focus on health and diet i think i can i think it can get tiring when i have to defend tracking my food protein intake uh straps and strength training i mean you just do you right people people can have the the questions that's okay right not everyone has to be on board with their own stuff um and you know what it is a lot of times it's people just, don't, they don't understand, they don't see it. And that's okay. That is okay. It doesn't mean that you have to give that energy. You know what I mean? I feel you. It can get tiring maybe sometimes, but hey, why are you doing it? Just explain that. I'm tracking my food because of this. I'm working on my protein. I'm working on this, that. You know what? I'm taking care of my health. And that should really be enough. People don't have to understand. They don't. 
right? I think there's a time and place for explaining, of course. And if these are colleagues or whatever, yeah, just answer, right? This is why I'm doing it. That's it. If, you know, because most people will not understand tracking food because they've never done it before. Or they've tried it and they just completely did it wrong, which is like 90% of the people. And guess what? In our program, we use that as a tool. We actually use it to learn from because apparently like we can't do great without tracking either. Makes sense? As a society as a whole. So we can use it as a tool. We can learn from it. We can improve your nutrition. You can get great results. It's objectively speaking, the best tool there is to relearn. And then you know what? We can step away from it. But people are not willing to see it that way, right? People have comments about their protein intake because they consistently under eat protein for decades. Because to so for them, right? It's like, oh, you know, it's weird because they are not used to it. Yeah, guess what? If they are not used to it, doesn't have anything to say about us, basically. Um, and strength uh, straps for your strength training, that, that's super smart, right? If you're doing ha heavy lifting, straps, like I use them too, like they're great. Right, you can target the muscles better, right? It's actually really good. So, yeah, I mean, just answer, be nice. And then be like, hey, you know what? It doesn't have to like impact me or how I feel. Maybe this person really just doesn't understand or it's their own insecurities or whatever it is. Elisa says, uh, what are your best hacks for stopping negative thoughts and stay positive? Sometimes life feel like a constant work in negative surroundings. Yeah. That's true. Um, but then again, negative surroundings, we can still do something about the actions that we take. We can journal, we can meditate, we can do our weekly or daily self-reflection, and we can make a point of, hey, no matter the situation, like let me work through this stuff myself because I can still do certain actions that will make at least me feel better and take better action even though the situation may be negative or whatever, you know? Debbie says, I tend to think I need comfort food when I'm bored or stressed. How do I overcome this? Um, good question. Boredom and stress definitely play into food. But I also don't know what the rest of your day looks like. Because I, I can't sit like, I can't say how often I get this one. But when I see people thinking they are, you know, um, addicted to sugar or chocolate or stress eat or whatever it is. And yes, that I'm saying, right, boredom and stress eating, it, it is a thing. But I want to know, are you eating enough protein? Are you eating enough fiber? Those kind of things. Because a lot of times it's a lack of that. Lack of fiber, lack of protein. It's a lack of structure. We're not sticking to our nutrition consistently. Are we practicing those basics? Because when we do, comfort and, and you know stress eating and those kind of things and boredom it's hard like if your nutrition is dialed in i'm not saying that it's impossible but it's definitely more difficult so without seeing more context i can't answer that question because i want to know first of all are the basics consistently dialed in and then second when is it happening when is it showing up A specific date time etc again looking for the root cause now we can figure it out. Questions. Um, yes, here we go. So from Christina, she says, when building new habits, do you need to do one habit at a time? No. Um, or can you do like three to four changes in at once? Or does your brain go? <laughs> I think I like, I like to say one up to three. The more shit you add afterwards, the more confusing it gets, right? Because uh, she says, if I do several changes in habits at once. Is there a difference between doing small changes and big changes? Yeah, so she speaks to reducing screen time and then implementing a weekly long run and getting better at planning my meals. I mean, those three, I feel like they could be worked on at the same time. That is cool. But what I will say is that, and this is what you see with any um, New Year's resolution, you know, people, it's like, People, people want to change everything all at once coming from December where they've not done shit, you know? So it's like we go from the holidays enjoying for waiting X, Y, Z 
And then we go straight into January and we try to change all our habits all at once. That gets too much and gets overwhelming because we need to understand that it can take up to months, almost a year even, um, to actually establish like a new habit. I think, so on average is like two or so months, 66 days, I think. But that's an average based on like anywhere from 18 to 200 something, which means that we don't know how long it's going to take. What I want to know is like, hey, how much are we actually putting in in terms of action, of course. And so, right, it, it could take a month or two or maybe, you know, almost a year. But make sure that whatever you do, you really work on. And I will say like we can work on a bunch of different things at once. And I usually think we should because one thing at a time is great, but I mean, it's also going to be very slow. People get impatient. Um, plus you might not be optimally spending your time. So I would say one of three things, that's plenty. Um, yeah, honestly, because the things that you mentioned actually sound fine. Like those, those are combinable, you know? Um, but I would be aware because at some point we add more and more stuff. And it's one of those where, hey, instead, we should just focus on a few things, really just move your mental energy to that, really dial in those habits, and then we can move on because we have all the time in the world. Like, there's actually no rush. Make sense? Um, Stina says how to be more present, not always think about what's next. I feel like my thoughts are more in the future than in the moment, and it creates more stress. Yeah. The future is not real. Uh, neither is the past. They don't exist. They don't, right? The future literally hasn't happened yet. So worrying about the future, that's really what anxiety is, right? It's like borrowed stress. It's like worrying about something that's not even real, which is a good thing you realize, right? The past also, like it's not real, like it's gone. It is, you know, it's not, it's not a thing anymore. Now we can only have our lessons, our memories, et cetera, from the past to make our current actions better, maybe more conducive to a, you know, a better future if we want to. But first of all, knowing that we cannot change the past, we cannot change the future is a huge one. To be more in the moment, I do think meditation and journaling, and this goes back to gratitude journaling, what I said, right? Writing down three things you're, you're thankful for, it's, it's huge right? Because you'll start to notice, like, hey, shit, you know, like, it's actually pretty fucking cool these days. Like, life is actually pretty good. Um, then I also want to know, like, what about the future are we stressing about, if that makes sense? So, right, all these questions with mindset, it's always, and this is the last question for today, um, all these kind of things with mindset, it's like, hey, are we actually actively, proactively asking ourselves the right follow-up questions to really get to the root cause of this or do we just stay at that service level because also here right okay so we're not being present we're always thinking about what's next my thoughts are more in the future than in the moment and it creates more stress okay very vague so it's not something i can really address but what i want to know again like are we asking those questions so what are we stressed about a lot of times we'll notice like, hey, okay, well, that's not something I can directly influence, but there are certain actions that I can influence in this moment that will be more conducive to a happier life. I think the, the gratitude journaling, the meditation, the mindfulness, the, hey, just being present, putting your phone away and those kind of things can be a big one. Um, but doing the inner work that most people don't want to do. It's asking those follow-up questions, and really trying to figure out where am I getting to this point now to where I do feel like this, where I am stressed about the future. Like, why is that? Make sense? So I want to thank everyone for this uh, long q and I know it's all a little bit more vague with the mindset stuff. I know that, and it's a difficult topic to really dive into, but I mostly just wanted to give you guys different perspectives here so that you can start to work on this stuff because it can take time and that's okay. Stay tuned for Monday's podcast, where I talk to my friend, Dr. Casey Joe. She's a um, mindset specialist 
She studied psychology and we talk a lot about these kind of things. So you're going to love Monday's episode for now. Enjoy your weekend. I'm very, very grateful for everyone um, on this challenge. If you've watched this long q and like this video, because I know it's been a long one again, I'll make sure to put on the podcast as well in like two parts probably. Um, but yeah, you guys have been great. I'm very excited to uh, wrap things up. And on Monday, we are going to announce the official leaderboard where the first place is going to get a free month of one-on-one -on -one coaching, second place, a free month in the group, and a third place will get a gift card for a supplement company of kind of like based on like where you're you're at. Make sense? So thanks again. I will talk to you guys very soon. Stay tuned. So two more days, right? Two more days. A lot can happen still. Take action, take care of your stuff, and then I will talk to you on Monday again. Thank you.